Hello everybody, I hope everyone's okay during this pandemic we're in now. So we wasn't going to do this video now, um, as we're about 95% complete then, but I thought we'd do it anyway because I haven't got a lot to do and uh, show you where we're up to. So, let's follow me. <laughs> okay, so. The van is a 2014 uh, Mark 8 Transit Jumbo. It was an ex carpet fitters van, and we bought the van just completely empty, and we stripped everything out and did what you can see in here with it. So we uh, we used spray insulation, uh, which is a closed cell spray foam insulation uh, over all the bare metal work. Um, then we, we sort of battened out first and then we used the foil um, insulation to use as a vapour barrier and then we used Tongan Groove uh, cladding to give sort of the finish you see there. Right, so I'll start with the swivel base. We decided to have a swivel base seating area here. Let's check um, <laughs> they do need a clean. Um, so this gives a nice sort of area, a bit of extra area where you can sit in the sort of uh, kitchen area. So I can wait while Angela cooks me some food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this is like the main kitchen area. We've got some O-head storage here um, above the bulkhead. That's currently full of tools and rubbish at the, at the minute because we're not quite finished. Some more storage here. Where we have our glasses and cups and then more storage above which again they aren't full of anything yet but we'll have tea bags and dry foods in there um the mirror here for getting ready light switches to turn on the bathroom and living area lights here's our lpg cooker there's a cooker um, this bit and then a grill here and then two burner hob up above there works really well we've tested this a couple of times had a fish finger sandwich on new year's eve which is very nice toast in the morning um here we've got a little chalkboard we can write memos on but that's brand new so we haven't used that yet we have some thermal blackout curtains here to sort of keep the cold out and stop anyone looking in. This window opens just to give a bit of ventilation when we're cooking. Close up. Here as you can see we've got a record player. Bit of a novelty, but I do like my vinyl so I'm gonna put some romantic music on when we're in the middle of nowhere somewhere. <laughs> Um, so all the drawers, they have push to open runners on there. So rather than have a handle to pull, you just push and then they open as so, all handmade. And then to close, push, and then they don't come out. That's the same here, my big drawers. And I've had a few people ask, um, do they open when you go around corners? How strong are they? And they, they haven't. We've driven quite a few miles. We drove up to Newcastle in here and they never opened once, so they're doing a really good job. So here is our uh, two kitchen taps. Um, one is our drinking water tap. So turn that on and it takes the water through from the tank in the back. We've got a 70 litre tank and it sucks it through this little filter there and the difference is just amazing um, they, it tastes so much cleaner the water what comes through here um, it definitely it's got a plasticky taste from the plastic water tank in the back so yeah it makes it much better so this is a hot and cold mixer tap um, it works because uh, we've got an instant hot water heater in the back an LPG powered instant hot water so I'll just show you how we turn that on. So this is the switch for our boiler. So click this and that'll send power to the boiler. Turn that on. 
and then this switch here is our boost sol uh, not boost solenoid our solenoid valve switch so if we click that that then allows gas to um, so when that's when that's off it stops the gas going any further than the bottle and the the, can, the um, locker in the back so pressing that let's see in here so we'll turn the hot water on now and this normally takes around 15 seconds to get to get to full temperature but we'll see now <laughs> so at the minute it's cold this they do it does light up so it's blue if it's cold and then it'll turn to green um, when it's sort of you know middle temperature it's just getting warm now so it'll turn to green in a second there we go and that's already quite hot and I think I've got it set up to about 45 degrees so on full temperature it'll go red as you can see still green and red <laughs> that's never happened before well now that is that's red hot now and that's the same system in our shower which I'll show you now our shower room um, I'll show you these as well, these are quite a new addition, but just handy to put your keys and towels. Right, I'll show you the shower room. So this is a shower slash toilet room. So we get a lot of questions asking, are these real tiles? And I'd like to say yes, but no, they're not. They're PVC boards um, with a marble effect design. We really love them, they're nice and lightweight, they all clip together so they're lovely and waterproof and yeah just really finishes the area off well I think. We have a vent, a little mushroom vent in the top there um, which you can open and close, stick your hand in. Um, I'll just show you, we've got a Thetford porta potty there which is um, it's the bigger of the sizes they do, I'll put a link into which one it is but some of them are quite small, but this is a nice size. See, I'm not the smallest human in the world, but I fit in here with a squeeze, but you know, it's enough to do your business. I'll shut the door, get privacy. And also, it's enough room to have a nice shower as well. Again, about 10, 15 seconds, and that is red hot, so no waiting around for anything to heat the water or anything like that which is really good right so have I showed the fridge yet? yeah uh, I haven't no <laughs> I'll show you the fridge should we swap places so the fridge we did it we did initially want a 12 volt fridge it's a fridge freezer by the way it has a little freezer compartment in the top there so the make Vitfrigio, I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, they do do a 12 volt version of this, but I bought it on Facebook sales and it was worded, shall I say, that made it look like it was a 12 volt version. So by the time I plumbed it in and everything, got it, so I realized it was too late to sort of say anything, but I'm actually impressed with how economical it is because our inverter only, it has a power save mode, so it only comes on when it detects power being used which is very good, it, it's very economical. With it being a, compress, um, a compressor fridge, um, it doesn't, it isn't running all the time. So um, yeah, so when it, it just comes on every now and again to keep, to keep the fridge cool and then goes off again. So with, with a little bit of sunshine through the day, um, we can have it on 24 seven and it doesn't affect the battery because it just keeps, keeps charging itself back up again. Um, we have 520 watt of solar, solar panels on the roof. They're two house panels, what you find on houses. Um, and I'll show you the battery and stuff in a minute. I'll move on to the dining area. Would you like to join me for some lunch? <laughs> <laughs> so this is our dining area, two seats. And our table uh, works the same as the drawers. So you push and then Nice little table to have some food on. Underneath the bed is our doggy area, because we now have three dogs.
this shares the space so um, with the garage area. So get rid of this towel. So it's a huge area. Hang on, I'll show you how big it is. I could actually go to sleep under here as well. <laughs> That's how big the area is. Elegantly get out now. <laughs> God. <coughs> right, so. So, under the seating area is storage. So, we've got this one. Nice bit of storage down there. And this one. Also has some nice bit of storage, but it also houses our Chinese diesel heater as well, which I've got to say has been a really good purchase. Heats the van in just a few minutes, really. And what's handy as well, it comes with a little remote. So, I don't know if you can see that, we just turn it on. And if you look around here. That's the control panel as well for the Chinese diesel heater. So that's just gonna fire up now and that'll be chucking out some nice warm air. Here is our control panel for our battery. So that shows the amps being used in the van. That shows the volts of the battery. This is our water meter, tells you how much water you've got left and if the waste tank needs empty. This is our Max Airfan Deluxe remote. So I'll just turn that on. He says. <laughs> then that gives either some nice air coming in, or you can change that for when you're cooking and it'll suck the air out. Really good bit of kit. And you can even have it on when it's raining. So it's completely waterproof at all times. Turn that off. The first time we stayed in the van, we, we gl we're glad we stayed in it. We had no electric, no water, no nothing. It was the first time I was running a half marathon and we just had set up the bed. I'll put some pictures up now of what it was like. It was brilliant, but <laughs> it was very bare. And uh, yeah, it was still good, but we did realize with this, uh, uh, with this um, seal, sort of roof light ceiling fan, it was too light coming in. Soon as soon as it was light uh, in the morning, we were awake at five. So we found this, which is perfect. Keeps the light out, keeps it nice and dark at night time, and yes, yeah, good little extra. That we found. You can just hear the heater firing up now. Actually turn that off because we don't need that on. It's off now. Right, next I will show you the bed. So we managed to squeeze in a king size bed sideways. Um, but the the mattress is a memory phone um, French sized mattress. So basically the French sizes are shorter than the UK sizes don't know why but it really helped us out so they're only six foot two long um, which is about I think it's 190 centimeters which worked perfectly in our widest bit of the van so it meant we could have our bed sideways which obviously helped with space I'll just show you so with the extra space you can have your feet in this part and really, I tend to sleep just with the pillow in front of this bit because I don't really, I don't really sleep straight out. But if you was taller than me, there is space to stick your head under there. Just maybe don't have a pillow, <laughs> <laughs> and there's enough room there. That's me. That's me straight. So. <laughs> and I've got to say, this bed is comfier than the one in our house. Mm. I'm constantly asking Angela, my wife, if we can come and sleep in here for the night. But 
<laughs> we have three dogs. It's a bit tight having them all in here. <laughs> so next thing I'll show you is our little side windows we've got. So we have one here, which both open up and we got the one with the bug screens on. I don't know if you can see that on the mm -hmm. phone. I'll just do a close up. So basically you can have the window open and you'll get no flies or spiders in there with you. Or of course, you can open them all the way. And close, and locked. And there's the same there. So if it's a red hot night, put the fan on, open the windows, lovely. So these are our touch control lights. So one touch gives a nice blue glow, which is perfect if you are needing a wee in the middle of the night and you don't want to get blinded by the lights. But then another one gives you full brightness, which really does light the van up. So we're happy with them. Up here was another one of these, but we soon realized I stupidly didn't install any 12 volt sockets to charge our phones. Oh, we do have 240 sockets down there by the kitchen area. So there's one there. And then there's another one here behind the telly. Um, we did buy the sockets with the 12 volt USB sockets in them, but that means that the if you're using them, the power is converted to 240, then back to 12. So it didn't make sense using the inverter just to charge a phone. So these two here means you can charge four phones or two phones and two whatever at the same time. That's handy. Bit of storage here for clothes or whatever. Um, at the minute it's got our Bluetooth speaker in there. What we tend to have connected to the telly. We have our games remotes which we have a games emulator on our fire stick which leads me on to our 12 volt telly which has um, our Amazon fire stick connected to so we have games BBC iPlayer every, everything what you'd sort of have on a fire stick all works and we also have um, a Wi-Fi router so that basically we have a unlimited Wi-Fi package with three mobile um, and this connects to our router just turn the telly so you can see so the router lives there which is connected to a 4g aerial which lives on the top of the van where we where we parked up um new year's eve actually had no phone signal at all did it no. <laughs> had no phone signal and we thought oh great we're going to be in the middle of nowhere here we can't put the fireworks on the telly forced uh, to talk to each other forced to talk to each other <laughs> And would you believe it, we had full 4G signal. Um, so the antenna is amazing. And of course, when you've got the, um, when you've got Wi-Fi in the van, you can just connect your phones to that and you're, you're sorted. So really happy with that. Oh yeah, we have a carbon monoxide alarm here, which of course is very, you need, you need that, you need to be safe if, you, if you're running LPG um, equipment in your van. Have I missed anything? <laughs> Think I've covered everything. Okay, I'll show you in the back of the van. I'll quickly show you here. So this is our gas fill up, fill up, uh, fill up area, fill up socket, <laughs> and our water fill up. There. So we went with a 200 amp power um, LiPo4 lithium battery. We went lithium because um, it's just the best technology, I think, um, for a battery. They, you can charge them up really fast. You can use a good, I'd say, 80% of the capacity rather than 50%, which 
um, which is the case with lead acid and AGM systems. So we're really happy with this. Um, moves on to our Sterling battery to battery. I think it's a 60 amp battery alter, bat ultra, I think it's called. So basically this takes your power from the alternator and then charges the battery um, up with it. So you get 60 amps of charge. When the, basically when the engine's running and you're going anywhere, it's charging this battery up. And yeah, if you're, if you're driving anywhere, you've got 100% battery when you get there, so it's really handy. Um, this is a great bit of kit. So it's a, it's a battery charger, a solar controller, um, dual MPPT uh, system. I think that's everything it is. So basically this is, a, this is the inverter and everything. It's a 15 watt, 1500 watt inverter, as well as, <laughs> it's very windy, <laughs> as well as a solar controller and everything like that. This is the shore power. Um, feed so you connect mains electric in there and it basically you can program it to do different things but we have it programmed so it takes over the sockets in the van. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Made you fly. <laughs> You're all right. Yeah. The wind's just sent Angela flying. <laughs> so basically when you plug in here the mains electric it takes over the sockets in the van and it charges the battery at the same time. This is our chint consumer unit. So basically it's a trip switch for everything 240 in the van. So any any problems, anything what um, any sort of high voltages or something's wrong, it'll trip. 12 volt um, fuse board and kill switch. So turn that and it kills all power from the battery to the electrics. Right, I'll show you now about the water. So this is a 70 litre tank. Um, it's uh, connected to, oh, I didn't, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't have a look what this is called. So basically this is a shore flow um, pump, um, which connects to this here, which I still can't, it's a surge damp damper, it says on there. That must, must be what it is. Basically without that, your taps will pulse. It'll keep letting water out and stop. This thing don't mind the gunshots <laughs> um, and this just sorts that out so it's continuous flow um, another carbon monoxide alarm here so if there's any leaks in here that's going to beep and let us know so this is our gas locker it's all completely sealed up and it has a drop out vent underneath the bottle just last job I have to do with this is put some straps around so it's secure in here. Can't really go anywhere anyway, but it just needs them to be safe and sound. So I've got this connected to the regulator, which um, brings down the pressure to the, can't remember what pressure it should be, but that's what that does, brings the pressure down. And the regulator is then, <laughs> trying to sit comfortably, is then connected to um, the solenoid valve which is the switch what I plugged, what I um, pressed in there. It allows the gas then to go further than this locker. So it's connected, there's a little valve in, um, after the regulator. So if that's switched off, no gas can get further than this cupboard. So it's really safe for if you're asleep at night, you've got to have that switched off so then gas can't go any further. Extra safety as well, you can just turn the bottle off and the, no gas is going to get through there. That's connected to a three-way manifold, um, which um, connects it to our instant hot water heater and then our cooker in the van. We do have a spare one as well, just in case we get another gas appliance, appliance in the future. So, so this is our instant hot water heater. So it was battery powered. But I bought a little, um, a little sort of thing. It's called a pump connector or a step-down connector, which changes 12 volts down to three and a half volts, I think, because that's what it that's what it runs on the battery. Uh, which means you never have to change batteries now. It's always wired in to, to be 12 uh, to the power of the van. Um, so yeah, basically, when you when you turn on the tap, 
it fires the, the boiler up, water goes through, heats the water, sends it back out to the taps. That's all this does. Um, I made the I made a separate locker for it. I see a lot of people with these um, open flue boilers in the van in the living space. That's a big no-no for me. Um, I mean, you're filling your living space up with dangerous gases, so it's not really recommended. I know you can open windows and everything, but not something we do. Um, I decided to put a computer fan on the side of the box, so when you switch the boiler on, this turns on, and it basically forces air in the box and then sends it out of these two chimneys in the top. So we've got one chimney that comes out the side, and another one that comes out the top of the boiler, which there's two chimneys on the top of the van roof there. Yep, you can just see them there. <laughs> and, and that's everything. Think of anything else? No. No? All good. Yeah. Stay safe, everyone. I won't you've been hit by